Welcome back to Off-Grid Autoelectrics. Uh, today I want to talk with you about a subject that's often been overlooked and today is all about power distribution. I've got my little cheat sheet again. It hasn't got uh, the diagrams on there. You will find all the info on this sheet later on. Uh, just look into the description of the video. There's a link. Sends you to our web page. You can download the PDF. So you can have a look at what I'm talking about even later and make your own little auto-electric book out of it if you want to. Uh, so power distribution. Uh, it is the most overlooked, but one of the most important parts. Power distribution is how everything connects together. It's about preventing voltage drop. It's about adding safety to the system. We're tapping into the knowledge of the lessons that we had before about how to fuse something right, what wire gauge is correct for what current, all of this plays a role. Now we bring all that knowledge together and we connect everything into a system. So you can buy the best parts available in the market. Everything can be the best of the best of the best. If your power distribution isn't correct, if the way how you connect everything together isn't correct, your system is not going to work and nothing will perform the way it should be performing. Uh, so when we're talking about power distribution, we're talking about how the power from the power source gets distributed down to all the little bits and pieces that you want to connect to your system. And also how the chargers connect to the battery or the power source that they are supposed to charge. To do this correctly, we obviously have to have a clear plan in mind and we're going from big cable down to small cable. So getting the wire gauge right is really important and we'll only get the wire gauge right by knowing what we're actually going to be using. So a normal power distribution system usually consists of a battery and from that battery Ideally, you've got one cable of the positive, one cable of the negative, a big cable. A poorly executed power distribution system is very easy to spot because you will have a whole array of inline fuses on your battery positive and then a lot of cables on your battery negative. That is not really a power distribution system, that is just something that's been banked together. There's been no planning involved. If you do it right, you know the maximum current draw from your battery with all the consumers, all the loads that you've got connected and you choose that first cable accordingly. So if you've got a maximum of say 150 amp current draw from that battery, you add a 3 BNS cable because that's good for up to 150 amps. If you want to overkill it a bit to prevent voltage drop, you can go up to 1 BNS cable as well and then you use a big fuse holder. You use something that's capable of 150 amps. So a fuse holder that you would use for something like that. Where is it? Is for example an ANL fuse holder. ANL fuses have got this size. So from the battery, the first part you would come to is usually an ANL fuse holder with an L fuse or you use a mega fuse which is about this size. From here in bigger systems you usually run into a large inverter that's one fuse and then you've got your main system fuse for all the rest where you then go from here into smaller fuse holders. So from here you will usually find maxi fuse holders that look Like this, this for example, a maxi fuse holder. I'm pretty sure we got maxi fuses somewhere. This is a maxi fuse, so we, you would use this for example to connect a compressor. Or you use it as a pre fuse for, let's say, a small fuse box because you can't just connect a fuse box like this to 150 amp ANL or mega fuse. This will be 
way over its head. These are usually designed for 60 or 80 amp max, so you have to pre-fuse them accordingly. If you don't want to use maxi fuses, you don't have to. Usually we use these under bonnets because they're waterproof. There's another pre-fuse that you can use, which is a MIDI fuse. This is also really good for power distribution. And you get an array of different fuse holders. So this is a twin MIDI fuse holder, very popular under the bonnet on battery terminals. They are not waterproof, but everything's tinned, so it doesn't corrode. If you scratch it, it might corrode years and years and years in the future, but they're quite good because there's little voltage drop on these. So they are really good for under the bonnet. I just want to make sure I put it back in the right spot. There we go. So that is usually how power distribution works. You work from your biggest cable with your biggest load through big fuse holder down to smaller fuse holders, down to even smaller fuse holders until you end up at a fuse box. And from here you then run your fridge, you run your camping lights, other little bits and pieces, your travel buddy, for example. Uh, Another good part about distributing power like that is that your battery is very cleaned up because you only got that one big cable coming to there. And then you run to the next smaller fuse holder and let's say you got the majority of your, of your loads in the back of the car but your battery in the front of your car, you can run a big cable uh, with the ATM fuse on it, so we use a 6BNS cable to run to the back of your car to supply this fuse box and then as soon as you go to smaller cables from here it's only a short run, so you really reduce voltage drop a lot. Those are the tricks about power distribution. So you want to make sure that you step down the power until you get to the right fuse, to the right wire gauge and when executed properly and thought through properly, you will get a very clean install. It is also really important that you use high quality connectors, uh, that you use the proper crimping tools. If you have to crimp solder when you can, uh, always heat shrink your connections if they could be exposed to moisture, water, dirt, anything that makes them corrode because that will create problems in the future if you don't tackle those issues straight away. And that way you should be able to design a system that will last for a long time and it will also perform very well because in 12 volt systems you have to understand that you have to reduce voltage drop because you have not got a lot of voltage to play with. So every time you add a connection Every time you run a small cable over a long distance, you lose a lot of voltage. And with that, you have to run a higher amperage to run an appliance, which will put more strain on your system, which will reduce lifetime of components, which will use life, uh, reduce runtime of your battery. So keep all of that in mind. Another really important rule, I've written this in capital on here, is you have to have a fuse within 300 millimeters of the power source. So if you got a battery positive terminal and you run a cable from that, within the first 300 millimeters you should have a fuse. The cable should from there on not go further because the risk of that cable rubbing through and shorting out somewhere before you actually connect the fuse gets higher and higher the further you get away from the battery. So that is one of the fundamental rules that the fuse needs to be really close to the source where the power comes from so that just in case the cable shorts out somewhere you've already got a fuse in your line. Uh, so what I've explained to you now is a conventional power distribution system. Uh, those of you who've been following us for a little bit longer and know our work know that we've got our own approach and that is the Egan range, so the Egan DC hub. If you want to come and walk with me, I'll show you a different way of doing power distribution. Everything that I've just talked about, except for the big A&L fuse, you know, I said battery positive, 
into the big NL fuse to your large inver inverter, and then another main circuit to your power distribution, and then you've got MIDI fuses, maxi fuses, fuse holder. You usually have bus bars like here to connect your grounds. You can do all of that with this as well. So you just have your main feeds going in here, and then all your power distribution, all your fusing is done right here. We, we minimize voltage drop, so having everything so close together, voltage drop is not an issue. Pre-fuses are not an issue because we are in a very controlled environment of a circuit board. Uh, we've already integrated the right wiring for DC-DC chargers, for solar input, for start battery input, which is something you usually manually have to take care of. And it will look somewhat like this. This is, this is pretty much the same wiring system like that, except for this is not quite as capable. This is a bit more capable. You see how this is really reduced in size. It weighs less, and it's a lot neater because you have to leave the cables somewhere with this. You don't have to have cables that interact with each other. You don't have crimp terminals to take care of because you can screw all the cables on here. So doing a crimp properly takes, takes some experience. Only after you've done a few, you realize, ah, you know what, the ones I did in the beginning, I should probably redo and do properly because I know how this works now. In here, you don't have to. You just stick a cable in, you tighten it to the specified torque, maybe recheck it once every year to see if it's all still good, and that's all you need to do. So the Egan DC hub has been made for people who want to have a good power distribution and fusing system, but without having all the experience and the knowledge themselves that you usually get after you've done this for a few years. So this is another approach of power distribution. If it is better, it's hard to say. There are certainly, uh, I think, a certain system size where it starts to make sense, but if all you do is having a battery and a DC-DC charger, and you run a fridge of it and one camp light on the back of your car, that's probably been overkill and it's not worth the access. Then you're better off building something like this because you save yourself some money and you probably save space as well because you don't need a big fuse holder and all that sort of stuff. On the PDF that you can download, I will add some proper diagrams of uh, conventional way of doing a power distribution and I'll also add a wiring diagram of how to do a power distribution with the Egan system. So when you download it, you get a rough idea. You could use that also if you want to build your own system. Download this page and you can follow the wiring diagrams on there. That's basically it. That's everything about power distribution. I think we talked about the most important things. Like I said, 300 mil of your power source, you should have a fuse. And the other rules, it's on here as well, is a good power distribution is all about safety. Use the fuses, put the fuses within a close vicinity of where the power is coming from. Step the power down. Big fuse, medium fuse, small fuse, and prevent voltage drop. Preventing voltage drop is really, really important. Good crimps, tight connections, heat shrink, overexposed copper parts so you don't get uh, voltage drop building up with corrosion over time. I think that's all I can tell you about that. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe down below and hit the notification bell as well so you know when the next one comes out. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one. Ah, and I just forgot, because this is a bit of advertising obviously as well, all the products are available from perthpro.com.au. I'm pretty sure you knew that, but I just thought I mentioned it.